Hey y'all, welcome back to Chat with Coach Amy. I have a guest today. You do? It's Wes Gaskin. Hey, hey, Wes Gaskin. Hey, everybody. <laughs> okay, so Wes has recently completed his master's degree in biblical counseling. I forget. <laughs> um, and so we um are both also certified life coaches. And we decided that we wanted to explore helping couples be better. And so we do have an offering coming up uh, for the month of September, and it will be um, group coaching with a one-on-one -on -one flair type thing. Um, and we want to talk about it. So it's called Transform Your Marriage with Expert Coaching. We've got a lot of a lot of experience. <laughs> I don't know that we're experts. We're experts at helping others. <laughs> we're really good at helping other people. Um, but it's month long Q and A style. You can turn in questions anonymously. You and your spouse can do that. Um, there are lives each week, but you don't have to be there live. Replay is there, and everyone that joins will have um, lifetime access to all the videos. So that is super great. You can deepen your um, your marriage, your family connections. Like I said, anonymously submit questions um, for us to answer. We will also have topics ready to talk about if questions are a little sparse some weeks. We can also follow up with things um, too. Uh, that follow-up dialogue, I think, is going to be really, really great for everyone. But we just wanted to share our heart behind, behind this. Um, many people that are, many ladies that are in my Blooms membership um, have seen a lot of, of of us and talking about marriage. And um, so they get it. But if you are kind of new to the group and you've never done blooms, you're like, wait, what? I thought she did food. <laughs> um, but I, I love helping people just be better. And um, this is something that we are, we're humbled to do because it's not, it's not easy to put yourself out there and say you want to help people have a better marriage because then you get attacked. Right. Jeez. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. But we're okay right now. So like <laughs> we, we are, but like that's part of the, the journey is like, we've been through our, our share of issues we've been through and we've had to work through and we've had to grow together. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that, this opportunity, this, what'd you call it? A tool. Yep. Um, this tool of the way we're organizing this, where you can submit questions and we can talk about them. Uh, and, and that husband and wife can submit questions individually. That's right. Anonymously. Anonymously that can be addressed in the group because so many times I think we avoid communication in marriage uh, for the sake of keeping the status quo and keeping peace, keeping the peace. Mm -hmm. um, because because a lot of times there, there are so many stresses in life, you know, between work and finances and the kids, you know, a lot of times when you get your time with your spouse, like you don't want to bring up, you know, maybe questions or things that have been bugging you just for the sake of you don't want any more conflict or you don't want any more. Yeah. And stuff gets shoved under the rug, and then it becomes a mountain between you. Right. And we um, have done that. <laughs> and and you, show have done that. <laughs> and years and years and years of doing that can can cause resentment. It can cause just a misunderstanding of where each other stands. And I think that's why it's this offers an opportunity for a couple to submit their own questions that they don't even have to tell one another that they're their questions. Right. Mm -hmm. And we can address them, you know, in a group community and we can talk about them uh, from perspectives that we've had. And it and just, for the Bible. and it just offers that couple behind the scenes, the opportunity to say, Hey, what did you think about, you know, this topic when they were discussing it? And it just kind of, kind of open doors of communication that have not been there in the past. Yeah. And with the group, um, the purchase of the group, you also have access to a discounted one-on-one -on -one session with just Wes, uh, just the husband and Wes, the couple and Wes, or um, the couple with Wes and Amy. You can choose that as an add-on if you want to. Um because some of you may need a follow-up. You may need some 
some uh, dialogue just some that is monitored and mediated um, just to clarify and help you work through um, challenges that you might be having in your marriage. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. You know, but just like to kind of give a brief background of us and our relationship. I mean, we've been married for 23 going on 24 years now. Mm -hmm. um, and like we've been through the health challenges. We've been through having and raising five kids, having three, adopting two. We've been through her health challenges and, and having a hysterectomy at a, an early age <laughs> and yeah. not having, not being on hormones for 10 plus years. Uh, that was very, very challenging for our relationship and our intimacy, you know, of dealing with those struggles. Um, so like we've, we've been and lived through a lot of it and we've not gotten it perfect, but we've worked through it and we've communicated uh, and we're in a lot stronger place right now than we ever have been. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. <laughs> yes. You're so, right. You know, but incorporating our faith into this and into this discussion, because we do come for, uh, come at this from a biblical standpoint, you know, that God has got to be, you know, um, my relationship with the Lord has to supersede my relationship with her and vice versa, we have to put him first. And if we're putting him first, that helps me love her better. You know, I can't love her sacrificially the way I'm supposed to without the love that I'm receiving from him and my, my walk with him. And in the same way, she can't show me the respect and, and all the things that I need without getting that from her, her relationship. With yeah. Him. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So um, where, where are we going next with this, this talk? You know, so like, think about, I wanted to think about like all the things that the topics, I guess, that could come up yeah. in these questions, Yeah. you know, um, you know, there's a lot of times we talked about like the not wanting to stir the pot or not wanting to open up a can of worms not wanting to disrupt the peace. Um, but what do you see like Mike can result from ignoring those things <laughs> and kind of just putting them to the wayside because you don't really want to <clears throat> get into communication? Well, I mean, what happened with us is we became roommates, essentially. We were roommates with a common goal of keeping the kids alive, getting the kids where they need to be, managing the, the finances the best we could um, and putting on a good face. And I, I don't, I really, it's all such a blur. <laughs> a lot of that for me personally, because of the, the lack of hormones, like he mentioned, but how long did that last? I mean, it was Ten years. A, a long time. Um, and so um, I think what kind of woke that up for us was, you know, me coming in beginning to take care of myself again and um, I I don't want to say that I'm a different person, but I am. I believe I'm the true version of who God intended me to be. Um, and I think that's great. But to answer your question specifically, I think um, self doubt, bitterness, resentment, depression, um, opportunity for a lot of sin to come into each of your lives and your marriage. It, it's just, it's a breeding ground for bad consequences. <laughs> um, and so if you came into your marriage, which it's rare that marriages happen when there's no love, it's very rare. So at some point, if you're in this yucky space that I was talking about, there was some point in yesteryear that you were in love. So that love for that person is still there somewhere. It may be itty bitty tiny like the Grinch's heart, you know, <laughs> but you can love on it, take care of it. And this right here could be your first step at working on that. You know, I mean, because for, there was never any doubt in my mind that I loved you. Right. 
And that's what kept me con that and my my vows to till death do us part, which a lot of people don't don't keep these days. But that's what kept me committed to you and praying that the Lord would bring us out of what we were in for so long. Um, but, you know, keeping that that commitment uh, of just understanding that that I do love you, yeah. even though we're not we weren't functioning at a good level right. for a long time. Right. Um, you know, and I believe that, you know, during some of that time, because of a lack of intimacy between us, you know, um, you know, I had a porn problem for a little bit that, you know, really, um, I, and, it, and it's not, I don't put any blame on her, but I put blame on both of us for not taking care of our marriage That's right. uh, and not learning how to communicate and how to work through issues of intimacy or finances or just general communication and and we know that communication <laughs> in our day and age is not good <laughs> no. when when you want to text everybody instead of picking up a phone call and and actually having a conversation oh mr i talk oh, for I, three minutes and i'm done well, yeah. <laughs> but we see each other constantly so we don't really have to talk on the phone <laughs> anymore we used to, though, man, <clears throat> hours and hours when we were in high school. I think there was a lot of silence. In <laughs> but Here, Hearing each other breathe. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Reality. Um, so, like, there was all different kinds of things that, that we went through, um, you know, struggles of that. And, you know, her hormones and a lack of desire and a lack of libido, um, lack of energy. energy yeah like i couldn't even wash the dishes you know you know and nothing and, and so, didn't want to i didn't care and i'm a tidy tilly i like things to be so there was a problem and so and i was the sole breadwinner for 18 years so you know working and doing physical labor being an electrician i would come home exhausted and i didn't you know it was very hard for me to have the the mental space to put into our relationship right. either well and caring for the girls i don't think we had the boys at that point um we were probably on the way right. which was crazy town usa but um yeah i mean it was we pressed in and so the commitment definitely was there the love was there and if you find your that you're you're like i know yes that's me that's me we we want to share like there was a reason we went through all this stuff and for me, I've been through a lot of really tough things and my personal stuff I use to coach and help. And so why not use what we've gone through in our marriage to, to coach and help couples. So that, that's why we're here. And, um, I hope that you have seen, you know, our genuineness and how we are not ignoring anything <laughs> here. We are, we are admitting um, that we've had struggles. But now what we want to talk about is how we can overcome those. And it wasn't easy. It took a lot of time. We still get frustrated with each other. But I'll be like, communicating, communicating. <laughs> and that can be, you hurt my, communicating, you hurt my feelings when you la la la. Or communicating, this is going to be a really tough week at work. I might be short with you. I might uh, need a little extra rest. Um, I might just need you to give me a hug and I don't need your words. I mean, whatever, whatever it is. Or communicating my birthday's next week and I would really love to do this. That's the best one right there. <laughs> Y'all are going to walk away. That's the best tip. I'm just well, kidding. I mean, and, <laughs> and like getting to that point where the fear and the awkwardness of conversation and like, Oh yeah. Not wanting the conflict and but but understanding that honestly the the more communication that you have and the better you learn how to do that the less conflict you have. That's right. Because you start yeah. understanding each right. other better. Right. You start learning where the other person is coming from. You start learning I still hadn't cracked your code cuz the other night we were talking about something and then he goes, "Well, I just want to say this, okay?" 
Like, I mean, don't take this the wrong way. And I'm going, what say? and it was something about something totally different. And I'm like, what in the world does that have to do with the thing we were just talking about? So bless. When it comes to my mind, so I better say it because I won't remember it. And then I said, I really don't like when you do that. Can you just say what you're going to say and just say it so I can get it over with? Because it'd be over by now. So we still, we're still working on it. But normally I would have just kind of panicked and shut down, yes. but um, we worked through it. And it felt like an hour, but it was probably like four seconds. I mean, those those times when your spouse is just like, you you know that something's wrong, but if you ask, they're like, nothing, nothing, right. nothing, nothing. Every, everything's fine. Liar. You know, I and, would say liar right now. That's what I would do. <laughs> you know, but you don't know whether it's you, mm -hmm. you don't know whether it's some, and men, you know, just, just, you, you, the, all the different personalities that your wife had, like you don't know which one you're dealing with at that time. You I don't know say if y'all do the same thing. You don't know if it's one or we have more personalities, I think, than y'all do. Okay, I think. So you don't know which personality you're dealing with. You don't know how to respond. Oh, yeah. Like, but learning, if you truly love one another, that it's okay to open up that situation and be oh big good word, word. Vulnerable. vulnerable yep i think you're gonna say that so like <laughs> learning to be vulnerable with each other if you can't be vulnerable with your spouse who can you be vulnerable with that blows my mind so so but like there's some men out there that are in probably not watching this probably, probably. they might they might get sent a link but because my girls are strong aren't you girls but <laughs> the word vulnerable to a man weakness to them it may seem like weakness yep. but it's not it's not that is that is you opening up your true self to your spouse who you are supposed to be one with That's that right. god says and they don't know how to be one with you until you are vulnerable with them mm -hmm. to really express it. that's so, good Good so job. these could be like any of these things could be topics that you may want to bring up in your questions and it may be specific to your relationship, but we can give you, you know, some perspective on how we've walked through these things and yeah. the things that we've learned yeah. and goals that you, you could set or activities or, you know, being, um, proactive in your relationship with your spouse to take steps to get better. And again, to explain, if you, if you become part of this group, um, which we'll have the links for you guys set up, you, the woman and you, the man will have a link each. You'll be emailed a link each that you can turn in questions that come to us. We have no idea who is sending them in. Correct. We do not know. Correct. There will be no so unless you, no spell it out, unless you spell it out, she's like, this is with me. that's my question. You know, she's never going to know, or he's never going to know. Um, so I just really want y'all to understand this is truly anonymous. The only thing that we're going to know is that Susie and, and Joe are married and they did a forum together. That's all we'll know. <laughs> so um, it, it truly is a wonderful way for any of those questions or those concerns, those obstacles, the struggles that you're having. Um, or just maybe you want tips on how to um, have date night. Like, how do you how do you make that work? I had a lady ask me that once. She was like, how exactly do y'all do this date night thing? And I'm like, I look at Wes and I say, are you, um, what are you doing Friday night? And he'll say, I'm taking you on a date. That's now what happens. But used to, I was so scared. I wanted to go on a date. I wanted, I needed to get out of the house, you guys. <laughs> but um, I didn't, I knew he was tired, you know? And so I understand how that, or we didn't have the extra money, or we had so many kids, we didn't know what to do, couldn't afford the babysitter, or we were whatever. You can ha we have date we have more date nights in our room than we do going somewhere. Now it's just like we go out to eat down the road. It used to be this five six hour thing where we went to another town and did dinner and a movie, and we got home at eleven thirty midnight. I I don't want to do that anymore <laughs> personally, but you know we also go on trips a couple times a year. And um, the one this this Valentine's Day, we we drove 
15 minutes um, just down the road and spent the night in an Airbnb. And it was great. And it was, it was not that big a deal. There's some that we've gone hours away or whatever, but it doesn't have to be that it can, it, it can be what you want it to be. You have to be creative to, um, to make those things work. And I can tell Wes, you know, I would really like to go on a date tonight. And I mean, I really would like to, sure. Like for real, for real. For real. It, this for is real. this is the invitation. I would like, I'd like to go on a date tonight. And he's going to well, say. Know, I, I, I was going to take you on a date tonight. You were. I am. To the, to the football game? Football <laughs> game with the boys. That's fine though, because you know what? That can be a date for us because our boys don't sit with us. They play with their friends. And so we can pretend that we're back in high school watching the football game. See, it can be a date. Mm -hmm. Good job. We didn't plan that at all. Like for real. <laughs> if y'all know me, you know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> what else do we want to talk about? Well, I mean, so that's a that's a topic of like in marriage. Are you putting your spouse first or are you putting your mm. kids first? Oh, that's good. You know, um because them kids is gonna leave one day and you're gonna go, Who are you? I'm not doing that. I mean. No, and, I don't want to, I don't, I'd rather not. <laughs> you know, I think, um, I think either side can be guilty of that. Um, but I think there's probably a tendency, <clears throat> you know, for the, for the one that does do that is they're getting fulfillment through that relationship with their kids, but they're not getting fulfillment. They have an empty marriage spouse. bucket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, in other words, when they pour into that relationship with their child, they're they get getting back. something in return. Well, we we want to see it where the spouses have that relationship of of healthy communication and and filling each other's bucket up um, and loving on one another, and then that that sh not only spills over to the relationship with the children, but it also sets a good example for the children to see that this is what marriage is supposed to look like yeah you know that's one of those generational things of you know well it may be a husband that just struggles with you know a certain area or a wife that struggles with a certain area because that's what they perceive marriage to be like because that's what they saw modeled in front of them you know as as a child uh, and that that can be a you know that can be an issue you know of yeah. overcoming that um, we don't always have to do um, and follow the example that was set in front of us that's right that's right and you know we have that a little more I was going to say something but I decided to say this this anyway um, we have five children our oldest is 19 she'll be 20 in April and she has a little promise ring on her hand and so this is for real for us. And we, I feel like we have done a good job overall of talking to our girls about what to, to expect in a spouse. Is that a good way of saying that? Um, and I'm super proud of the fella that she has <laughs> and all of that. Um, but it's, it's real like that, what he just said about how your marriage is an example to what you want your children to experience. I mean, if that's what fuels you, like even in food coaching with THM stuff and uh, life coaching or just habits and things, you know, a lot of women, I, I have a hard time getting them to do it for the long haul just for themselves. But if I bring in, it's a little secret, a little secret that I do, but if I bring in, well, if you continue to keep promises to yourself, you are going to inspire someone else. And they're like, oh, well, I sure wish my children would eat more healthy. Well, uh, what am I trying to say? Model it to them. Model it to them. So what we're doing is modeling to our children what a healthy marriage looks like. We apologize to each other. We apologize to them. We go on dates. We sometimes put our marriage before their stuff. Um, we've missed things that they've done. We're sorry. <laughs> you know, uh, not often. But we have, no, but we, if it's our anniversary, we are going to do something to celebrate our anniversary. Anyway, um, the other thing that I was going to say, and I think this was a big turning point for me. I'm not sure if it was for you, but um, 
a couple of years ago, and this has happened again recently, we had um, friends whose spouse passed away, two, two couples, um, and it was within a, a pretty um, close range of time. And I will never forget, um, I was sitting in my old office inside our house. My door was open. He was sitting at the bar. And I said, hey, babe, so-and-so passed away. And he looked right at me and he goes, I'm not wasting any more time. We are going to be more intentional with our marriage. I, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to ignore stuff anymore. And we had we had come really far, but I think that was a big turning point. And we we became a lot more intentional with our speech, with our actions, with touching and loving on each other, with, um, you know, like if I wanted to take a walk, I wasn't going to go by myself. He's going to come with me if he can. And uh, sitting outside and drinking coffee, see, none of those things cost money. Um, and I think a lot of times we say it's got to be this big extravagant date or this trip or this huge bouquet of flowers. Nope. I just want time with him, you know. And do I always want to take a walk? Oh, no, but it's so good for you. I'm good. <laughs> but like, I don't always want to take a walk, but that's part of sacrificial loving is that I'm going to do the things for her that she needs from me to feel a connection. And in the same way, um, she's going to do the things that I need her to do, whether it be just a, a emotional support of, of respect and admiration listening. and listening and use vocalizing all that to whether it be intimate intimacy in the bedroom of just, you know, the, the physical touch, but it's a, it's a give and take and you marriage is not a place that you can be selfish. Ooh. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, so, uh, the, the moment I was talking about when we found out they passed away, do you, how do you feel about that? Yeah. I mean, like it, it gave me a sense of urgency. Did you feel that? <laughs> I get a sense of urgency every time I look in the mirror and I see this great. It, it was right here. And now it's sneaking up here. And so like, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm 43 going on 44. Like, you know, we hear of in a week. Oh my gosh. Your birthday's in a week. It is. Y'all remind me. I got to plan something. <laughs> no, you ain't got to plan anything. Right. So like, but like the sense of urgency, like if you hear of a spouse, uh, a friend's spouse pass it away, you're like, I'm not getting any younger. Like I only have this is it. so many days on this, this earth, is it. Yeah, you know, so many days with her, so many days with my children. We and act like this is the, tr this is the dress rehearsal. This is it. <laughs> well, this you know? is not our, you know, from a spiritual standpoint, this life. is not our home. Right. That our, our real home is in, in heaven with the Lord, but for this earthly life and this relationship, this, this is, is it, is it. <laughs> yeah. because on the other side of heaven, this relationship is not like that. Right. It, you know, and that's a whole, I was about to say, let's, no, let's not, not, not that. but, <laughs> we're coming but close like, to time. this is, this is it. So make the most out of it. Quit wasting, you know, hours and days of your life, you know, not having yes the marriage that you want. Yep. Yep. I I don't like wasting time. It, it's it's just in my DNA. I don't like losing. I don't like wasting time. I don't like being told no. Um or what to do. I, yeah, I don't like being told what to do. But um <laughs> for this for this part and what we've learned is you know there's there's no sense in ignoring something that can be taken care of. But we ignore it because we think it's going to hurt and it's not going to turn out the way we want to. And I don't like that either. That's why I said those things that I don't like. Um, but sometimes if I come to him with an idea or a thought or a situation, he is definitely going to think about it differently than I am. For sure, going to. <laughs> and so <clears throat> sometimes he may completely agree because it really doesn't affect him or the family. Uh, but he could say, but what do you think about doing it like this? But when it comes to us or how he's made me feel, he can apologize and we can move on or we can deal with all those yucky negative consequences that I mentioned before. And I would rather go ahead and Matthew 18, come to him, say, say what it is in a very loving 
if I do it on the front end, it's going to be loving. If I let it go and go and go and go and go, it's going to come out of yuckiness, bitterness, maybe hatred, frustration. I would rather come to him on the front end when it's not such a big thing. So um, anyway, if you're wanting to improve intimacy, talk about household managing household responsibilities, working on your communication, working on those date nights. I hope that you'll come and and join us because this could, like I said, this could be the first step in helping heal your marriage and we would love to be a part of it, right? Amen. Yeah, yeah. anything else you want to say? That's all I got. All right, thanks for listening. Y'all be sure to like, share and follow and comment and all that stuff, okay? Okay, thanks. Tell them bye. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all.